Thank you, friends, for joining us today. I'm Doug Kaufman, the host of a show you are popularizing. It's my show. It's called Know the Cause. Understand the etiology. If your ticker is ticking out of its chamber, why? What are you eating? What lifestyle are you living? What drugs are you taking that may be causing that? And then change. So as a child, did you love science fiction? Oh, I used to love some of these things. In a science fiction kind of modality here, scientists have adapted a chemical approach to turn disease cells in our body into manufacturing plants that make molecules to treat a disease called muscular dystrophy. And to me, that's kind of science fiction. So they take disease cancer cells and make them little pumps that could pump out medicines for treating muscular dystrophy. Look, I don't even purport to understand how that might work, but I'm not the scientist they are. Here was the bottom line of this research paper and the reason I wanted to do it in my opening rant on the show. They said a couple of times in the paper, this study could lead to many new medicines. Wow, many new medicines. As though new medicines are going to cure breast cancer. As though new medicines are going to make the PSA test more accurate. As though new medicines are going to stop asthma in children. Lifestyle, I think, contributes. That's diet, exercise, etc. Contributes to ill health. Why are we trying to medicate our way out of lifestyles that we could change? Welcome to Know the Cause. You know, not many people know this about me. By the way, casual Doug Kaufman, thank you for joining us today. But when I was 20 years old, I tried smoking because everybody cool was smoking in Vietnam, which is where I was. And the sea rats, you guys know, or you women know who are in the military, um, the sea rats, it was just a cardboard box and it had maybe some peaches in, you know, corn syrup, and they had uh, beans and meatballs and things like that. And then they had little wedges, you know, some toilet paper and chiclets chewing gum, and then four cigarettes, right? And I would trade my cigarettes for the peaches or pears, and everybody wanted the cigarettes. Well, a couple times I tried to smoke, and I'm telling you, I felt high. And I was a corpsman. I was responsible for all these Marines. If anything happened to them, they get shot. I got to get over there and get them patched up and call a helicopter and get them out of there. I didn't like feeling high. And so I stopped smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes kind of get a bum rap. Doctors, you know, respiratory doctors all over the world are saying, well, you smoke cigarettes. That's why you have these lung problems. Okay, go with me here. Breathing problems. Here we go. About 46 million Americans smoke. About 46 million Americans have breathing problems, most of which are asthma. Um, but COPD, you know, respiratory distress, etc. It's easy to blame smoking for these problems, but it isn't only smokers who have breathing problems. Okay, then what else can cause breathing problems? Okay, this is kind of interesting. Look at this. Fungus and asthma. About 5 million Americans are actually sensitive to fungus and it causes their asthma. This is what medical science says. I don't know if I buy all this. And it causes their asthma, a condition called ABPA. It's not known how many other breathing problems are also linked to fungus, but my guess is that many or most are. A 2014 study showed that toenail fungus drug, the toenail fungus drug we talk about on this show all the time, it's called Sporinox, offered relief to over 60% of those who had this fungus-related asthma. Okay, let's set the, the, uh, uh, the page turner down here and talk about this. Did you get that? About 60% of those people who were allergic to fungus got relief by taking what? An antifungal drug. What then, doctor, is the etiology or the cause of ABPA? Fungus. Amen. Book is closed, so you would think. I don't know why. Yes, I do. Let me tell you why doctors don't understand fungus. Folks, you go through a school that is largely funded by the pharmaceutical industry. You learn that there are, what, 10,000 antibiotics that can really save lives. I mean, in certain cases, I'm all for antibiotics. And then you learn, oh, wait a minute, no, you don't, that those antibiotics are fungal derivatives, fungal byproducts called mycotoxin. 
okay? Do the study. Myco means fungus, toxin means poison. Who in their right mind, if you're governing the education these doctors are going to get, are going to teach every young medical school student that mycotoxins can cause serious disease if your antibiotics are mycotoxins? So understand, when they gave this, 60% of asthma or those patients who had asthma due to fungus got better. Didn't one doctor go home and tell his wife, you're not going to believe this. I'm giving my patients a toenail drug called Spornox, and over half of them are getting over their asthma. Now take those patients a step further. Put them on the phase one diet. Put a good photocatalytic unit in their house. As a matter of fact, I did this for you. If I had asthma, if I had any breathing problem, here's what I'd do. I'd ask my doctor for Spornox. Look, it's a simple toenail fungus drug uh, because it may rule out the cause, the fungus. Please stay in touch with that doctor because you'll need to do regular spirometry tests to watch for improvement. Now, spirometry is this. <sighs> Blow as hard as you can on that device, and the nurse or the doctor sees the needle going, okay, lung volume is getting good. <sighs> he breathes much better on Spornox. Could that have been a lung fungus condition? You know, we talked about birds, we talked about mold in a home, etc. I changed my diet to a strict phase one diet. Let's say the Spornox works. Man, get on the phase one diet and then test your home for mold and finally find a good photocatalytic product in the bedroom. Put it in the bedroom. I'd spend a third of my life in the bedroom, folks, so put that good photocatalytic. This is advanced technology for air cleaners. Put it in your bedroom. You spend eight hours a day in your bedroom. See if between the Spornox, the Phase One diet, and the photocatalytic unit, you're not feeling much, much better. You can get over breathing problems, they say, 60% of the time, if you know how. Don't go away. I would just like to thank Doug Kaufman for all he's done. I've watched him on his television show for many years, and I just want to say that the Fungus Link has helped me and my family tremendously. And I'll tell everybody that I know about how good it is and all the things in there that it can do. They really need to watch the show, and they really need to listen to everything that Doug says in there. He needs to get the book, the Fungus Link, read it first to fully get an understanding, and follow the diet in the back and the products that he's called out in there. Because everything that we have really is connected to fungus. After having read the, the Fungus Link and the Diabetes book, um, it's eye-opening. It's allowed me to, I guess, feel the joy and the happiness to practice again. And a lot of times with my patients, they come into my office and they have questions in regards to various things and I don't have good answers for them. Um, they've tried various medications, they've tried antibiotics and, and uh, other things. And, and honestly, it's very, very difficult to, to look people in the eye and tell them, I just don't know. I just don't know how I can help you any further. After having read these books and, and after having spoken with Doug, um, I, I, feel, I feel like there's hope again. I feel like, you know, um, maybe there's a way for me to now help people that, that before would have been, you know, basically hopeless. I have to prescribe them the medications, the antifungals, the diflucan, the nystatin, um, and get them on these diets because it only makes sense. It's logical to me at this point. I feel like if, if I were to withhold that information from those people, I would not be you know, upholding my oath that I've taken to, to help other people. And, uh, and that's something that I've dedicated my life to. I can't not do it, I should say. I can't not do it in all good conscience. This is good science, and, and Doug has shown that. Okay, now please remember as I answer these questions, I'm not a physician. I have about 50% of the brain capacity of a physician. So understand this is just what I'm recommending. Always get to a doctor when symptoms abound. Next question comes from Vicki. Teach on chronic sinusitis. Ooh, this is a good one. Thank you, Vicki. On 9999, September 9th, 1999, wow, a long time ago, my fax machine, I don't think I had email back then, my fax machine went crazy because the Mayo Clinic said virtually all chronic sinusitis, people who talk like that, had fungal conditions, not bacterial. Now, I think there's a milieu. I think it's bacteria and fungus, but no doctor knew fungus grew up here until that Mayo Clinic study. Here's what's fascinating. 
If you go to any clinic today with chronic sinusitis, you're going on an antibiotic. And antibiotics seem to fuel fungal problems. Women get vaginal yeast when they take antibiotics. You're fueling an underlying fungal problem. So I think the reason we see so much chronic sinusitis today is because it was acute, you went to a doctor for it, and he assured it was gonna become chronic with antibiotics. It just makes it grow worse. Uh, sometimes. So understand if you have chronic sinusitis, understand I believe the Mayo Clinic was right, 94, 96% of all the people who suffer from this have a fungal etiology. So gavage the nose, get to a doctor, say, Doc, I want some antifungal nose sprays. There's another great question. Linda asks, what are the die-off symptoms of fungus? Linda, die-off means an exacerbation of some of the very symptoms you presented with a long time ago. So people go along and they go on a diet that seems to fit them pretty well and they're feeling okay. Then Kaufman mentions go on an antifungal program and get diplucan and Istatin from your doctor or use some natural supplements to kill fungus and you go on a phase one diet and you feel miserable. You have awoken a sleeping giant very often. Not in all cases, but if you feel worse when you start this program, Really, really good news. I've got some great news for you. It may be fungus. Now, I said natural substances. Garlic sometimes works with people with high blood pressure. So says our resident pharmacist, Susie Cohen. Here she is. Have you been told you have hypertension or high blood pressure? It's called the silent killer because it's usually unnoticed until you get a heart attack or stroke. A recently published study has discovered amazing news. Garlic, one of our favorite antifungal spices around here, was shown to be just as effective at lowering blood pressure as the leading medication, which is called atenolol. Not that any of us want pain, but did you know that exercise has been shown to increase your pain tolerance? Those who exercise can deal with chronic pain for longer than those who live a sedentary lifestyle. Bone loss can also help be prevented by physical activity. Many people don't know that. Healthy bones equal flexibility and strength. Not only that, but exercise can help with aching backs by disrupting nutrient flow to the spaces in the spinal disc. I think it goes without saying that exercise serves so many purposes, stress reduction, depression reduction, and now we learn it minimizes pain. That's a good thing. Personally, I don't feed my dog Remington anything that's not fit for human consumption. And that includes ingredients like corn, sugar, soy, and gluten. He simply eats raw meat and vegetables, and his treats are organic raw carrots. This means that I make most of his food myself. And if you really want to keep your pet's weight and health on track, you should consider doing the same too. What you put in your pet's dinner bowls directly affects their health and wellness. It can prevent or cause obesity, diabetes, arthritis, and early death, just as it does with humans. And the fact is, you could lose years of precious time with your pet simply by not paying attention to what they're eating. The Association for Pet Obesity Prevention released the results of a study which found that approximately 53% of cats and 55% of dogs are overweight or obese. Seriously? Just because we overeat doesn't mean we have to do this to our pets. Luckily, I know some excellent resources to get you started on their new diet. Check out the cookbook called Dog Gone Good Cuisine by my good friend Gail Pruitt. Unlike other pet cookbooks on the market, this one focuses on easy, delicious, whole food recipes that you can both enjoy. They are completely corn, sugar, soy, and gluten-free. There's even a chapter with special recipes to address illnesses. I highly recommend it. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori for Know the Cause. I wish I knew as much as that man, Dr. Fred Pescatori. Thank you for that, Dr. Pescatori. Not long ago, someone said to me, Doug, what do I do when I'm moody? You know what I told them? Watch Know the Cause, especially when Kyle Drew is on. 
Oh, I love talking about supplement suggestions. So we'll cover a number of things today, but always remember diet comes first. Always remember, uh, make sure and check with your doctors before you change anything and always know that we are not your doctor. We are not diagnosing or prescribing anything. But the first question is, I need supplement suggestions for adrenals. Now, there are two ways of thinking about adrenal. First of all, it's the stress gland, right? Just sitting above the kidneys. A lot of times in Chinese medicine, they will talk about something going on with one's kidneys, but actually they're talking about the adrenals. A lot of times when we talk about adrenals, we're talking about I've got too much cortisol. I'm too stressed all the time. Let's talk about that first. A few suggestions for you. Number one, I think that we have to get enough of the good old B complex. Number two in the back here is good old oil. Make sure that you're getting enough fat, okay? Here's a couple of herbs that I'd like to just hit real quickly. Number one, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha, terrific Ayurvedic herb to help bring the calm in and bring the cortisol down. Also, I forgot to bring my supplement that's called L-theanine. L-theanine is an amino acid found in this stuff right here. This is green tea. And when you drink green tea, yes, it has caffeine, but it also is balanced out by something called L-theanine that helps calm the nerves. There's a plenty, there's plenty more of those. There's the L-theanine, the ashwagandha, the B-complex, and there's also other ones like Siberian ginseng is tremendous. Holy basil is also good, but I don't want to overwhelm you. These are terrific. But here is a lesser known problem, you guys, and that is my adrenals are too low. What do I do if I don't have enough cortisol? Guess what? I found out that that is me. I am dragging in the mornings, but at night I perk up. That is one of the symptoms of having low adrenal activity. Well, my favorite thing in the world for low adrenals is this. This is called licorice. No, it's not the candy. This is the herb, and I always get the tincture. I'm not gonna go into all the reasons why, but this is the tincture that I get. And licorice under the tongue, what's interesting about it is it doesn't create more cortisol. What it does is it just extends the half-life of the cortisol you're already making. So that means that you're feeling better. I used to call this Red Bull for the adrenals, but some people didn't like that. So I won't say that here. Next question is, I need supplement suggestions for sleep. Well, I am going to move a few of these things. Actually, a lot of these things for oh, calming the ashwagandha, that's kind of nice for this. But why don't we talk about a few of these supplements right here. Um, the, the one on the end here is called GABA, gamma amino butyric acid. GABA is such an important inhibitor. It, it's an inhibitory neurotransmitter and it brings you down and it helps you to sleep and helps you revive the next morning. Tremendous, tremendous product. Also, melatonin. I don't recommend taking melatonin all the time, you guys. Really and truly, this is not an everybody, everyday kind of thing. But if you are jet lagged, if you just need to get over the hump, melatonin is very nice. Also, I can't say, I can't talk about sleep without mentioning him. This is a good combination product. Make sure you're eating well, make sure you're not getting caffeine at night, but you know those things, right? Hopefully these will help. Next question, I need supplement suggestions because I am moody. Wow, I don't even know where to begin because why are you moody? What is the problem? What's going on in your life that you're moody? Is it, uh, Trevor and I were talking here, who's on this camera, and we were talking about uh, a lot of people being diagnosed with bipolar, a lot of ADHD, uh, sometimes you're just mad all the time. Uh, our friend John Miller was talking to me about a guy that he used to work with and every day at two o'clock he just started getting enraged and what he needed was blood sugar control. And he was eating sugar all the time and his blood sugar dipped down. Honest to goodness, let's get the diet right first. And with diet right, let's make sure you're getting plenty of fats. Again, here's olive oil. Let's make sure that if there's any depressive symptoms, talk to your doctor first about something called 5-HTP, which is the precursor of a hormone called serotonin. That can make us feel good. You take this 5-HTP at night and things start evening out. And again, the uh, B-complex is huge because if our adrenals are all messed up, it can make us feel terrible all the time. These are the suggestions that I have for now. I hope these help.
Well, about four years ago, I was on my treadmill because I walk on my treadmill every day because I'm a type 2 diabetic. I was flipping the channels trying to find something to watch to keep me entertained and I ran across a show called Know the Cause and I just started listening to it. It was like somebody turned a light bulb on for me. It all made so much sense. And uh, I tried the Atkins diet, I tried doing exactly what the, the so-called experts said and it didn't work. I couldn't get my blood sugar below 180 uh, doing exactly what they said. And so when I started doing this phase one diet, it all came together. Within just a few months, I noticed that the, the pain in my elbow went away because I also work out with uh, free weights. And when I would do curls, my elbows would hurt so bad I couldn't hardly really touch them. And that was the first thing I noticed. Just one morning, it's like, they don't, they don't hurt anymore. That was the first thing I noticed. And then my blood sugar started to leveling out. I noticed that, and I just, I just felt so much better. Type 2 diabetics are overweight. I've never been overweight in my life. I've always tried to exercise, and I, I thought I was eating right. I was doing what they told me, you know, the whole grains and the low fats, and it just wasn't working. And, uh, but no, I've never been overweight. Uh, and I asked the doctor, I said, well, because he told me, he said, what's a skinny little guy like you doing with all these old fat men problems? And uh, I said, well, I don't know. That's why I came to you. Well, he just dealt a bad hand. That's, that's the only explanation he had. My cuticles used to split open every winter. Just really bad, painful. I'd have Band-Aids on every finger. And that didn't happen to me anymore. And I credit it all to know, know the cause and Doug Kaufman and, and the phase one diet. And I, I recommend everybody to get on it. It's just so much better. And I just, I just can't thank Doug Kaufman enough. I feel like he saved my life. Dr. Greg Emerson, all the way from Brisbane, Australia, joins us right now. I love these segments with Dr. Emerson talking about him because Dr. Emerson is a guy who gets it, who understands, who now for the past eight years has studied mycology, and you don't learn that in medical school. This was something postgraduate after he gets his certificate. Uh, he learned all of this mostly from his patient, a little bit from our website, TV show, which you have graced for many, five, six years. Six now. years now. Boy, thank you for doing that. You're like Santa Claus. You know, you come <laughs> once a year and we get all these. Uh, I want to show you a couple of, uh, a couple of slides. People have asked, um, could these be due to fungus? Here we see a colitis. This was from one of our employees at one time. And you see what looks like monilia, you know, what looks like candida albicans. Uh, he improved vastly on a phase one diet, and I believe his doctor did give him antifungals, and he did quite well. Your take? Well, that's obviously fungus. I mean, it's, you look in the mouth and you see uh, yeast in somebody's mouth that looks just like that. There's, we know there's ordinarily yeast in the bowel, and it's held in check by the good bacteria in the bowel, but when that overgrows, it gets out of imbalance, the yeast takes over and overgrows, yeah. and that's just a case of yeast Lots of antibiotics. Lots of yeah. antibiotics. Next too one? Much, too much sugar. This is uh, one, one of our viewers actually sent this in, not sure I can even say it, but she said, could this be a fungus? Your, your thoughts on this? I think that is Molluscum contagiosum, and there's no doubt that Molluscum contagiosum is a virus. Modern medicine doesn't really have a cure for it, but if you think about it, you've got to say, why is my immune system failing and being taken over by a virus? The way to fix it is to change your diet to boost your immune system. We know that selenium, 400 micrograms a day, and some colloidal silver in and mm -hmm. on it will take that away really quickly. And it's kind of interesting in that this is on his or her face. Um, could this be a fungus? You can have an underlying fungal problem in the gut and all of a sudden you become toxic. Remember, mycotoxins hurt, lower your immunity. Uh, so a virus could grow in place, an opportunistic organism like a virus could grow. Next one, John. Ooh, onychomycosis. Do you see any of that in your practice? Most weeks we see somebody coming. Nobody comes to see you with that. They say uh, they've come to see you with their cancer or their heart disease, and I say any other problems, and they say, oh, and I see any, any other rashes. They say, well, no, I've got no rashes, but I've had fungus growing on my toenails for 20 years, and that's just the canary in the gold mine. That's the body saying there is something wrong with the underlying terrain of my body allowing yeast to overgrow, and therefore it's contributing almost certainly to the other diseases I've got as well. But we are just like a doctor here. We're looking at four or five toes, and we're saying, ooh, ugly, we can fix that with Spornox. And you're not looking at the other 99% of the human and taking a good history on diet, on supplements, on medications that can throw the body's immune system off, et cetera. So that is a fungus. Uh, 
that causes that. Next one, do you see this in Australia as we see it in America? We are we have become an obese nation. I think 66% of us are overweight and some of those morbidly obese. Are you seeing a lot of it in Australia? It's a well-documented problem in Australia. Wow, Why? food, lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle, antibiotics are growth promoters. And so we share some commonalities from country to country. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's, we only have 30 seconds left, but this is the Ebola uh, virus. You frightened in Australia as we are here in America about this? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think this, we get our news from you guys and there's a lot of that in the news and yeah, people are worried. Once again, are you saying, as with the other virus, get your immune system up? It's like any virus. Uh, you know, there are ways of protecting yourselves against viral illnesses. I haven't had a viral illness in 12 years, nothing, yeah. cold, flu, nothing. That's because I, I eat well and I keep my immune system up and I take um, uh, uh, supplements to modulate my immune system. Mm -hmm. Be careful out there, but also be prudent consumers and get that immune system up. Thank you, Dr. Greg Emerson. Thanks for having me, Doug. You bet. We discovered in the 1940s that antibiotics were actually neurotoxic, certain antibiotics, so they could adversely affect the nerves in the body. Listen, if you suffer from depression, see a good counselor. If you need to take medications, that's okay for a period of time until you figure out when and why the depression began. Change your diet, change your lifestyle, take some antifungals just in case that depression has deep fungal roots. I'm not old. I made the one years young, okay? I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I think it was about three years ago, and uh, I got on Doug's diet. I heard about him anyway, so the doctor wanted to give me several different shots or have an operation take these seeds and I says, no, I'm not going to do anything. So I got on Doug's diet and I went back in six months. And he couldn't find anything. So my brother, he was diagnosed the same as I was. He had an operation and he's having all kinds of problems now. Real strong on Doug's diet. I, mean, I don't fall off of the wagon. So I stick right to it. Nothing to it. Doug just, I think he's He's a gem. I've got three or four of his books and I watch him quite regular on, on the Dish Network, Sky Angel, and I'm really thrilled with what I hear. Uh, that's about all I, I can report anyway right now. Okay, and finally today, folks, I had this from Nancy. Can fungus grow in a man's bladder? One of these textbooks I talk about, medical textbooks, says fungus can grow anywhere in the human body except the teeth. So yes, it can. Men get yeast infections also. Thank you for joining us today, folks. Think fungus until proven otherwise. We call it here, FUPO. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye -bye.